Shad Adversity. Greetings, I'm Shad. And I hate to say, Captain Marvel sucks. And I actually do hate to say that, because I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I actually liked Captain Marvel, or Miss Marvel as she was known, when I was a teenager, and I was quite excited when I heard a Captain Marvel movie being made, and then things just went downhill from there. Now I'm going to explain in detail why the movie is very, very poor, from the character problems to problems in the plot and everything like that. It just wasn't an enjoyable movie, and that's really the thing, because as I came out of the movie, my full, you know, feelings, emotions, impressions was meh. That, that was it. And it's interesting, like, I was thinking, look, it wasn't horrible, horrible, but it certainly wasn't great, it was just so meh. But after I watch a movie and I then think back on it, really try and break down certain parts on it, I, it's actually possible for me to like the movie more, as like I realise, hey, they did something quite clever there, that was good, I can enjoy that, uh, even a bit more now that I realise what was going on. And then also, if I go back and you know reflect upon it and find even more issues, like what, why did I, I, why wasn't I on the edge of my seat in this scene? I was like, oh, well, that's why. Oh, that, that's why, and that sucks. That's they got issues, and the movie has issues. I compare my reactions to Captain Marvel to The Last Jedi. When I watched The Last Jedi, there are actually many parts that I was able to enjoy. I laughed at the jokes and things like that, and there were some pretty cool, visually stunning scenes, like when, you know, Captain Holo rams her ship and the other thing, but later when I think about it, it's like, well, hang on, that scene just now undermines so much of Star Wars in regards to their technology and continuity and consistency. It's like, that's now profoundly stupid. A scene that looked brilliant and did have a wow from me in the cinemas is now wholly despised by me, as with so many other things in The Last Jedi. The interesting thing about Captain Marvel is that there were far less wow scenes, but there are other things that don't make me despise it as much as The Last Jedi, I like how they portrayed Luke Skywalker's character or anything like that. So it is both better and worse than The Last Jedi, because of the, the worse for the no wows, and better for the things that were not personally offensive to me in regards to how much I love the characters in Star Wars. And so if you don't really dig deep into the underlining kind of problems with the movie, it'll be a very average experience, I expect, for you. Maybe average to good, depending if you if you just like action, just like something very bland and, and generic in regards to the superhero genre. But if you love superheroes, maybe. But there are some things that are actually not subtle and kind of beat you over their head that could really ruin your experience of the movie. So now I want to talk about some of these issues specifically. But to go into them, I am going to have to go into some light spoilers to even a fairly heavy spoiler, because it turns out the entire plot of the movie is a massive plot hole. It's a contradiction. The whole reason why the characters are doing what they're doing doesn't make sense. It's stupid. And if you don't want that ruined, might be good to stop because I have to point it out. It, it's like one of those... Yes. <laughs> and then there's also the politicization of this film, which is a touchy and sensitive to topic for some people. And I generally feel that when it comes to entertainment, let's keep politics out of it. I have strong political opinions, right? And I do my best to try and keep that out of my content on Shadowversity because Regardless of your political opinions, I think it's awesome if you like swords, pop culture, everything like that. That's a common interest that we can get along and have fun with. It brings people together, okay? And by politicizing these things that once brought people together, now divides people and makes the world a more polarized, conflicting, angry place. And it annoys me. Now, I said I do my best. That doesn't mean I succeed completely. My politics do creep into my stuff sometimes, but for the most part, I try and keep it out. And that's kind of the key. Even if there are some politics that seep in, don't beat people over the head with it. Well, Captain Marvel doesn't do that at all, okay? In fact, the entire film is a feminist allegory. And I'll explain how it's a feminist allegory later on in this video. Now, if you're a feminist, that might be great. You love that for it. But if you disagree with certain extremist views of feminism, well, then you're not going to like the film because it's so blatant in how it handles this. And the movie is then going to disillusion a large portion of its potential audience and 
a large, a large portion of that potential audience were people who once really enjoyed this character. Well, she's always been a very average character. You know the reason why I liked Captain Marvel when I was a teenager? She was a female who was good looking and could kick butt. That was all I needed as a teenager and that was great. Now she kick butts in a, not a very satisfying way. Her character isn't enjoyable and it's politicized and uh, they didn't cast the best character who reflected what Miss Marvel once looked like. So you're not going to track that original audience. And girls can have their comic book movies, that's not a problem, but if you expect those movies to do well as some of the other huge movies, it's not going to because you're disillusioning and pushing away a huge portion of the audience or the fan base that underpins comic books generally. Comic books have always been a more young boy, teenage male, and just male interested genre. Why? Because it appeals to guys. Men and women are different, okay? And when I was a kid, like young boy and teenager, I wasn't into Babysitter's Club or Little House on the Prairie or Pride and Prejudice and things like that. Boys, on average, get into reading much later than girls. And so, you know the thing that attracted me to reading? It was comic books! Right here, I still have comic books that I collected when I was a teenager down in my bookshelf. Let me pull one out. <laughs> this is the Dungeons and Dragons comic book. I, mean, I forgot I had this one. <laughs> Good artwork in it. This thing, I hated reading as a kid, but I liked pictures, I liked action, I liked adventure and heroism and stuff like that. And comic books was just this wonderful thing to actually get me into reading as a young boy. And with comic books being focused more on action, heroism, adventure and stuff like that, boys on average are going to be more interested in it than girls. That's just it. The girls who love comic books are awesome. I've been trying to get my wife to get into the superheroes and comic books my whole life, okay? It has never been this exclusive thing where these guys, boys who love these properties, pop culture stuff. It's like, no, you, you this is a boys club. No, okay. We've been trying to get girls in, into them for years, but because they are catered to a male audience, well, guess what? That's what they appeal to. And if you're going to try and shift that to cater to a female audience, which you're perfectly fine to do, that's great. Women can have their superhero movies and stuff like that. But like I said, if you're losing at the larger audience, don't expect it to perform as well. And don't call guys sexist for not getting into it because there are simply things that guys like. Like Alita Battle Angel is a perfect example. That movie is bloody awesome, okay? Strong female character, doesn't face us at all, all right? The movie is great. Wonder Woman was awesome. And if you wanna know what some of the appeal for younger teenage guys is with those two, is that they're both hot, okay? It's as simple as that. But then they are also dynamic, realistic, human characters with flaws, weaknesses, things that they struggle with. And so they're just, you can get invested in them. You don't get this with Captain Marvel. They've tried to make her appear more masculine, more soldier-like, okay? That's gonna be, have less appeal. Then she has the personality of a stump of wood in the movie. That's not going to appeal to anyone, regardless of their politics. And then the whole superhero rescuing other people, the heroism, the adventure, the action, okay? These are things that guys generally gravitate towards with their entertainment. Just on average, there are girls who like that as well, but you're gonna find more guys who like that, just like you're gonna find more girls who are interested in romance fiction. Less guys are going to be into that, okay? The whole chick flick movie thing is consumed by more women. Why? That is generally what they like. So don't expect all the guys that have been into comic books for over a year all the time to be as into Captain Marvel when they have overtly and explicitly catered it to a more female audience, and there are less females into comic books, so the natural result is it's not going to perform as well, even if it was half decent, which it is not. The movie sucked. I didn't like Brie Larson's Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, in the first five minutes, and it wasn't because I was out there wanting to dislike this movie, it's that in the first scene, she's snarky, she comes off as a bit condescending and arrogant, and then she has this one-on-one -on -one fight with her mentor, and the mentor is trying to tell her, you have to control your emotions, don't lose it, and by the way, no pew-pew energy things, okay? This is a fair fight, I'm trying to train you how to fight. And so she's trying to hold back, right? And then she gets beaten, okay? She gets beaten in this arm combat and she just stuffs it and shoots him anyway because she's a sore crappy loser that conveys a bad attitude she's a cheater she's not noble she has trouble controlling her temper and not in kind of like an entertaining comical way but in an insecure douchey way this isn't going to endear us to this character at all and so look like even in the movie I wasn't as overtly aware of this but I was just nothing made me invested in this character at 
all. And that was a huge problem through most of the movie, okay? The movie starts out with her having amnesia. She can't remember her past. And this is an interesting parallel with Alita Battle Angel, who also starts out with amnesia. Now, in contrast, I didn't give a stuff with Carol Danvers having amnesia because I was given no reason to care about her. With Alita, she can't even remember her name and she actually cries at that. She is truly heartbroken that she's starting at square one. That makes you invest, you feel sorry for her, okay? And then she's in the thrust into this big unknown world and she's got wide-eyed amazement at it. She has this almost innocent childlike naivety which also makes you endeared to this sweet little creature girl and when she can kick butt as well, you're like, holy crap, I love this character. And the acting and emotionality of Alita is just phenomenal and it's animated, okay? An animated character feels more human to us than a real actor playing the role of Captain Marvel, who has less emotion, she's always stoic, snarky, bossy in a condescending way, and look, there are some times where it breaks a little bit, like with their banter with Nick Fury in the film. Okay, it starts breaking, and then she goes back to just looking like she has a permanent pole stuck up her rear end, going, I'm just dissatisfied with everyone, and I'm also tough, and I'm gonna show you I'm tough for the sake of being tough. So I couldn't care that she had amnesia, all right? I, I didn't get into it, and that leads into another major problem. I had no reason to care about the fight that she was in. So she, we start, she starts out, she has amnesia, and she is fighting with the Kree against the Skrull. Why? Seriously, why? Why does she care about this battle, okay? Has she lost a loved one? Does she feel particularly invested in the fact that these people saved her when she woke up with amnesia? Does she really care about the Kree? No, nothing. In fact, it seems like she's more willing to beat up her leader and prove that she's tougher than him than actually care about his life and the Kree's life and their whole battle in the first place. And even then, if it was just an act of gratitude for the fact that she thinks that the Kree saved her, that isn't a strong motivator to go into a war, okay? She has these powers, and so what, is she just, because she has powers, she wants to learn how to use them? That is a selfish motive, not a selfless motive, and it doesn't make us invested in her as a hero. She is there just to learn how to use her powers and become tougher and figure out her own past and stuff. So again, no investment into her cause. Like, for easily the first half of the movie, I'm thinking there, why should I give a damn about any of these fights? And if there's no investment in the fights, the fights, as spectacular as they might be, and they weren't actually, you can't enjoy them. Now, eventually, she finds some people in actual need, and she decides to help them out, and okay, finally, she's doing something that we kind of can get on board with because these are innocent people, we want them saved, helped, or whatever. So so, all right, that, it, that I was mildly, mildly invested in, but honestly, it was because of the people she was trying to save had more character than her, more personality than her. Even the villain has more personality than her. And everyone in this movie has more personality than her. I didn't give a stuff about her character because I was given no reason to, but the villains are the other people. Nick Fury, Nick Fury is Nick Fury, okay? You can get into it, you can enjoy it. She has no vulnerability and in fact, no real weakness. Like seriously, if you've seen the film, can you name what Captain Marvel's weakness is? This is a huge flaw in the whole structure of this character, okay? Weaknesses are what make characters seem human. In fact, it's the weaknesses that are far more interesting. It's what people can't do, and therefore what they have to struggle to overcome that makes them interesting. They have flashbacks with her failing and getting beaten down. And if those scenes were perhaps given more time, more weight, all right, where she was struggling to get something, and honestly, it was also very politicized, these things, because it was always mean boys and men beating her down, okay? Okay, you're like, yeah, so you can figure out what they're trying to say there. But even then, because evil characters can be male or female, all right, and if there are legitimate struggles that the character's facing with and they overcome with true, you know, grit, determination, but also difficulty that they're failing, that can be satisfying. But there's, those scenes aren't even paid whatever. They're just showing that, oh, look, she's been basically bullied her entire life and, and that's it. But when she's actually the superhero, all the main plot that's going on, there's no weaknesses at all. She like, essentially never gets beaten. She might get captured, okay, but then she just breaks free as well. Captain Marvel essentially has no weakness, no emotional vulnerabilities, no self-doubt, nor anything like that. She doesn't feel genuine or human, okay? She feels more alien to us than the aliens.
<laughs> really. And in my opinion, I do feel this is uh, due to the politicization of the film because the film is, like I said, a feminist allegory. And so they kind of are wanting to say that women are strong, which means they don't think that they can give their hero any legitimate weaknesses or vulnerabilities because that might, in their mind, they think, well, that means we're saying women can be weak or vulnerable, which they can. So can men. In fact, people have weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And if you don't give a person that, a character in film, literature, TVs, whatever, they're going to come across as ingenuine, unrealistic and not compelling at all. It's the actual personal struggles and weaknesses we have that help define us more than just succeeding, okay? Uh, like Captain Marvel is essentially a Mary Sue in this regard. And again, to compare it to one of the best examples of a strong female character in recent history is Alita, Battle Angel. There is a scene where she loses. She gets the crap kicked out of her. She, uh, you know, Android body gets ripped apart, okay? She still fights, which is just awesome. And she's struggling, she's crying, yet she doesn't give up. And there's this really strong line where, I won't swear, but she's like, F your mercy, right? And even after that, she actually still loses. She's about to be crushed and she needs to be saved. From who? By her father, essentially the father figure in the movie. He comes in with, of course, her boyfriend and she's saved by male characters. Now that actually did touch me because it helped build Ido's character quite a lot where he is a paternal, fatherly, he really does love a leader and care for her. And you hear it when he screams like in desperation heartache seeing Alita damaged and broken and defeated. It's emotionally bad. Even if that wasn't a male character doing it, it establishes that this character isn't perfect in every way. She can lose, she will keep on fighting, but sometimes even if you keep on fighting and you don't give up, you still lose and need to be saved. It made Alita feel more real and she's still kicks wholesale butt in the whole movie. But that scene set up such a human element that she's not perfect, she can get beaten. She's not a Mary Sue, it helped build the relationship between the other characters and made her seem more real and genuine. Captain Marvel, nothing. Nothing like that. Because if the female character needs to be saved by someone, well, that means that, you know, we're, we're kind of implying that girls are weak. No, it's dumb, all right? People all across the border weak. And if you're going to try and make one person because of some political ideology seem that they are, in, you know, as strong as anything, it's going to come off as unrealistic. And I'll criticize the male action heroes that do that as well. Have you ever seen Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Okay. The character is stupid, dumb, unrealistic. Why do guys still like it? Because it's got gratuitous, violent action and it's just a whole lot of brainless fun. You don't get the brainless fun with Captain Marvel. It's not catered to a male audience. And so when you have nothing that's really going for it and a crap character, and yes, the character in, in Arnold Schwarzenegger's Commando is absolutely crap, and the acting is horrible too! Right? Wrong. If you've got nothing else going for it, the movie is going to suck. But for some people, the feminist angle is going to be the selling point for them, and they'll love it for that, but don't expect everyone to love it with you. It's not going to happen. Just like guys who like the Commando movie, we don't expect people who love Pride and Prejudice to get into Commando, and we're not going to call them sexist if they don't like it either. I mean, come on! Seriously. Then, her powers. How do her powers work? Like, in superheroes, it's almost comical that powers are never explained very much, okay? They just have them. Like Scarlet Witch, we don't really know how her powers work in detail. She has some level of telekinesis, she can do some brainy things, but she is not invulnerable. She's not, like, unbeatable in every way. When you get a character to that level of power, it's good to kind of at least get a baseline, a comparison, an explanation. So, Thor, okay, we get some explanations. He gets his power from Asgard. He inherited it from his father. He took a dying star to the chest, okay? That gives, it a base, that gives us a baseline to say, Thor's pretty tough. We get that, okay? We've seen what he has been able to fight and overcome and, uh, and expect what he can fight now. Captain Marvel, she gets a power from some scientific accident where she absorbs energy. We don't know how powerful the energy is. We don't know any reason why it's so powerful. She doesn't get her power from the sun like Superman. There's no baseline to compare a one great massive feat that, you know, blows everyone away where she's like, she should have died from that. That should have destroyed her. How could she have survived? At least hinting at the potential level of her power because her power supposedly is to be greater than Thanos, okay? Give us an indication of that. Instead, it's like she's got these pew pew things and something is restricting her full level of power. We don't know what that power level is, but she's always on his baseline and when when the thing breaks free suddenly she is more powerful than anything and 
there's only slight mild amusement or surprise. Like, one of the, the villains don't expect her to be as powerful as she is, uh, but then they don't really express that she's unbeatable. They just think, oh, we'll just come back and fight her now because uh, we still can defeat her. It's like they're making her powerful for the sake of being powerful without giving any genuine reason for it, which then makes her powers hollow and unsatisfying. How was she able to absorb this energy? Why didn't she die? Why is the energy affecting her in such a way? How powerful is this energy source? Where is it coming from? Why does it make her invulnerable as well as being able to shoot things, okay? Yeah, she has a high level of strength, but it's not like Hulk levels of strength in any part of the movie previously. All we know is that she can shoot and she's a bit tougher, okay? Now suddenly when her powers explode, she is invulnerable and is able to ram ships into and stuff like that. Why? Because plot, Reasons, deus ex machina. She can be powerful because she's powerful. That's unsatisfying. And when it is the thing that is saving everyone, it just, uh, you don't get into it. Thor in Infinity War, yes, minor spoiler here, he gets totally trashed by Thanos. He's not powerful enough, and so he needs to get powerful enough, and at least there is a thing he needs to do to get that more powerful. He needs a new weapon that can fight Thanos, a weapon specifically made for it. We don't know how, we don't know why, but at least it explained that there is a weapon for him to get that powerful, and so when he's that powerful, we understand how he got there. We don't understand how Captain Marvel got there. And then we do come to this whole feminist allegory that the whole film is actually structured around to reflect, okay? Captain Marvel has this inhibitor kind of thing on her neck, which is restricting her from her full powers. And this is also, by the way, going to lead into the overall plot hole of the entire movie, okay? But anyway, so she's trying to fight against the intelligence who was trying to suppress her and, you know, she's locked away and stuff like that. And she says, I'm paraphrasing, I've been fighting with an arm tied behind my back this entire time. Let's see what I can do when I'm set free. And she breaks it off and then the music of I'm Just a Girl starts playing as she starts blowing everyone to hell. That is a direct allegorical reference to the feminist belief that women are oppressed in society and held back with an arm tied behind their back. And if they were just set free, they would be able to kick butt as much as anyone else in the world. Doing it along to the theme song music of I'm Just a Girl. And I'm not saying that women face unique challenges that are directly imposed upon them because of their gender. What I do believe is that men also have that as well. We commit suicide more often than women. We are killed in jobs to the large majority of the human race in women. It is mostly men dying in jobs. It is mostly men dying in wars. We get sentenced to much higher degrees for the same crimes than compared to women. Our rights in child courts and custody are spit, okay? Men almost have no rights over their children. They are performing far under women academically. There are less university degrees and, you know, doctorates or whatever, all that stuff. Less men are getting them. It's men that perform the most dirty, grimy jobs in all of society. And of course we can go through the challenges that women face as well. We both face challenges and honestly it balances out. And so the narrative that one gender is uniquely oppressed over another does not fly with me. It doesn't ring true. And when a whole movie is structured around to emphasize that and push that, okay, it breaks the immersion and just throws me out of it completely. Now I'm not saying they shouldn't have made the movie like that. They can make a movie catered to whatever audience they want, but don't expect me to go along with it as much as everyone else and don't call me a sexist if I don't drink the Kool-Aid with it. It's their fault for pushing away the larger demographic that enjoys comic books and comic book superheroes by making it not for them, you know? And if it wasn't made for the larger demographic that enjoys it, don't expect it to perform nearly as well. And you know what you could have done? Tried to make a movie that catered to both. Instead of being an overtly explicit political ideology over people's heads, you could have just kept it even, like Wonder Woman, and everyone would have enjoyed it. We love Wonder Woman, feminists loves Wonder Woman, and people who disagree with the ideology loves Wonder Woman because it's a great movie, it wasn't beaten over head, it wasn't catered to a single demographic. And the unfortunate thing is people are still gonna probably accuse me of being sexist for pointing out this over overt kind of political and ideological leaning in Captain Marvel, but I feel like I need to say it because a lot of the major reviewers who have been reviewing Captain Marvel don't mention this very blatant and explicit allegory that the whole movie is structured around, that, you know, Carol Danvers is being held back, her powers are being held back, but if she's set free, she can beat everyone because she's just a girl. To, to the whole, you know, music theme song. But this is the thing, and I think it's too late because people who probably consider me a sexist for saying this probably signed off and not watching my review anyway, and they're gonna miss what is uh, the, the stronger point of what I'm trying to say here. If you were to take out even the small and overt political allegories and ideological allegories that exist in the movie, 
it would still be just a, a lousy film, okay? The character was uninteresting, there are issues with inv being invested in the character, we don't care why she's doing what she's doing. And then the entire structure of the plot, okay? This is spoilers, but I have to explain it to explain the unbelievable plot hole that exists in this film. The Kree get in a fight with the Skrull and they find out the Skrull are after what's called a light speed engine. So it's established that they are after the light speed engine and at no point do they reference that they're after the thing that enabled the creation of the light speed engine, which again, spoiler, happens to be the Tesseract. But it's very convoluted because the Kree actually know that this light speed engine was already destroyed, okay? Because that's how Carol Danvers got her powers. There was a hidden scientist on Earth developing this engine and Carol Danvers was the test pilot for this really advanced jet fighter plane, whatever. It crashes, it explodes, she absorbs the energy somehow and gets the powers because reasons. And there's nothing explaining that the actual source of this this light speed engine was the Tesseract. It, it just is. They ask the Skrull guy this and the Skrull guy says, oh no, the actual core is hidden away on the uh, research vessel that the scientists had or something. They had no reason to go after the Tesseract. They could have just said, we recognize the energy source that is indicating something much, much larger. But for all intents and purposes, it's actually the light speed ship that was established that they're going after. The Kree are going after it. The Skrull are going after it. And the Kree are going after the energy, the power source of the light speed ship, which was absorbed by Carol Danvers. And they already have Carol Danvers at the beginning of the film, so they would think they have the light speed engine already. And then it turns out that the Skrull don't even care about the Tesseract or the light speed engine or the anything. They were only trying to find this hidden away science laboratory because other Skrull, their family members, were hiding there, and that and that's it. And so the light speed engine, the Tesseract ultimately mean nothing, but the Kree want to get their hands on the Tesseract that they didn't even know existed until they go on board the spaceship and they're only going after it because they want to get the light speed engine. But Carol Danvers is the light speed engine, she has the energy inside herself and they already have it from the very beginning. So there we go. These have been my detailed thoughts specifically as to why Captain Marvel was such a poor film. And so this is me just saying, oh, it's terrible because, you know, women and sexism. No, no, no. Make sure these are the legitimate reasons. The problem with the characters, the problem with the plot, the lack of emotionality and the fact that it just wasn't an enjoyable film overall and then with its d explicit politicization is disillusioning a very large group of people who could have enjoyed the film far more. And I tell you what, this character feels so out of place with the Marvel Cinematic Universe which is filled with such great characters, okay? Both female and male, okay? Great characters, great storytelling and uh, it is a very poor addition into that lineup and uh, I don't really want to see more of this character in all honesty. So un it's unfortunate because I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would have loved that this movie was great, but it wasn't. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, and until next time.